so from Sadina also. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So um, welcome everybody to the Martin Siegel Center here um, and at Prelude, and this is a, one of the um, uh, I think uh, important sessions about the civic engagement and the big question. Um, what to do in the days uh, where we live now and the times we, we do live now. So we here at the Seagulls thought that perhaps um, it is time to, to go back to basics and rethink also what artists are doing and how to engage and that uh, perhaps uh, as much as uh, politicians as we accuse them have left people behind, workers, uh, uh, families, uh, the everyday American, the real American, whatever that also is, and that um, Perhaps uh, it is also time to re-engage in a very uh, basic, simple way. And um, we are a public university, and so um, we think uh, there's a public theater, and there's a big old tradition of uh, engaging um, with the public in public spaces. And um, in Europe especially, there's a big tradition that public spaces, the streets and the parks belong to the people. Um, you don't need permissions, you don't need uh, a Red Bull sponsor of a chemical bank or uh, Visa, Visa or MasterCard or some people can do uh, things on the streets and um, also perhaps it's a bit lost but there are movements, uh, Friday for Future movement, there's a movement in Germany and France that people meet spontaneously on Thursday evenings in parks, bring their drink and food and talk to each other instead of mediated discussions through uh, television and others and they think, uh, or we think the time right now um, they are dangerous times, and uh, sometimes we'll talk about Hannah Arendt and you know the significance of what free speech means and the freedom of gathering, and that perhaps um, uh, we um, should also uh, try to get out of the institutions where we are in, maybe get out of the way to see people just as audiences, as the way as politicians should just see people as voters, but to have an, a dialogue or to create a space um, for a dialogue, and there are lots of public spaces and um, they are all not fully used, and I think there's a lot of creative potential. I think there's also a hunger, and that is also, also an urgency that we re-engage and uh, wake up and, uh, and understand that democracy is not uh, just a consumer democracy. It's actually always a way to participate and to get people engaged, neighborhoods, and, and perhaps uh, this project which we are thinking of could be Working, we don't know. It's something we would like to find out, get your feedback. But we think it's a serious proposal. We really want to engage. We really want to um, invest time, time, some of the resources. And so Sanas, who has been the Prelude curator, also said that she liked the idea of the project. So she has been working a bit with us, did some research, and I would like to ask you to share your thoughts, and then maybe we come together in a small circle, and then we um, discuss or think. Uh, uh, what this uh, could mean. We will see this as a founding uh, moment of that uh, movement and see if it will get traction or not. But I think uh, we all have to do something in life and something in our specific moments and engage with something. So this is a contribution what we will try to do. We have to try many, many things. Some will work, some won't work. Nobody will fully know, but I think it's important to really engage. And this would be uh, an engagement of the Siegel Center and uh, us here. So please, address. Hi. Uh, this is going to feel a lot more formal for a moment um, than it finally will be because I practice behind a podium and so I'm going to keep it. <laughs> but uh, it's only a brief little thing that I want to... Oh, Ellie and Drew! Oh, so Excellent! Join us. Please have a snack. Also, I want to note that anytime you feel the desire, come by, get a snack. So. <laughs> Come through. Yes, great. Awesome. Um, so I, I know most of you, and those who I don't know, I look forward to getting to know by the end of this evening. Um, so Hannah Arendt, I had no idea who she was until Frank brought her up, which is actually, um, it's, it's, it's a point with most of the people that I researched for this, uh, this, this, uh, this talk, which is a three to five minute talk. So. But this is all my research. It's, I've got like a whole, I've got a lot of articles. And I'm gonna leave it right here um, in case you at some point want to look at it. Um, and or, yeah. So, um, Frank came to me with this idea and 
there was just something about it that I feel like I was like on the same level with you in that moment. Um, where it was, I, I, I don't know what we do, what we need to do, but I know we, 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 we both wanted to move towards something. Um, and so we started to just meet and work on it, I think is the first step towards a lot of, that's the way my artistic process definitely works, which is my essential thing that I do, um, is oh, just get together and figure it out. And so that's kind of what we are doing. Uh, so welcome to the inaugural public assembly for the Public Parks Project, um, which is a new initiative, a new public laboratory devoted to civic engagement through uh, theater performance research on the aesthetic and the political. Uh, our first idea is to organize um, speeches, public dialogues, storytelling, discourses, music, um, in all 140 parks in New York City. Now that sounds pretty ambitious, but I really think that the idea is feasible. Um, and if we look at some of the archives uh, for the public parks, if you go, to, you can find these online. Um, <laughs> uh, they really speak to what happens when you get a group of people in a public space you have them congregate. Our lives are increasingly privatized and in spite of or possibly because of social media, actual physical spaces of ritual and practice, a shared practice and shared inquiry are disappearing. Um, yet there is this need, this desire, and I can feel it with myself, my friends, Drew came over a few, uh, like a, a month ago, and we had a salon sort of thing where we sat down, and we were like, we have to start talking to each other, or nothing's going to change. Um, but anyway, we need to remain, and people are still desire to come together face to face, um, and have conversations towards understanding common good, whatever that, that might mean. I, I mean it in the most general way at this point. Um, questions, where do we all stand? What do we care about? Um, how are we connected? And um, we want to engage these public parks as spaces of discourse. Um, and we also need to give structure to that discourse as we open them up for human congregation. Uh, Alan Ginsberg. <laughs> He's not the only one, but he definitely has a photo in there. Um, so I did, as I said, a lot of research for this. Um, and uh, someone I stumbled across, and a lot of these names are new to me, but definitely not new to other people, so forgive me. Um, but uh, German philosopher and sociologist Jürgen Habermas, he, brought, uh, he did a lot of work on the public sphere, um, which is, again, you may already know this, but a social area where individuals come together freely to discuss and identify problems and through discussion influence political action. Um, his idea was that by having private individuals and government authorities, um, uh, by finding a place between private individuals and government authorities um, where people could debate um, public matters, this could serve as a sort of counterweight to political authority. Um, that being said, his conception of the public sphere is no longer adequate for the critiques of uh, is no longer adequate for the critiques of the limits of actual existing democracy in late capitalist societies, which is something that Nancy Fraser brings up. She's a critical theorist and a feminist. Um, in her in her um, it's it's a very long dense article uh, uh, that you can find in there. Um, and she counters that an adequate conception of the public sphere requires the elimination of social inequality and that a multiplicity of spheres is preferable to a single public sphere. So, so that is what we are doing, this 140 parks, this idea of multiplicity um, is creating a regular, regularly held multi-space engagement wherein different publics can uh, sit together and en engage in explorative conversations. <laughs> the idea being that um, these networks that are many will intersect. Um, and like a labyrinth, this is a multi cural labyrinth, um, which is more like a maze and less like a labyrinth. It has many, many entrances, many pathways, multiple chains. Um, it's open-ended and you can enter it from many different ways. It's like a hypertext. 
Um, <laughs> you'll find that article in there too. Um, so this made me think about how important it is for us to be thinking about lo local organizing um, over national leadership at this moment in time. I mean, so much of um, so much can happen through decentralized power, as evidenced from Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement, uh, and, and Greta Thunberg, um, who, <laughs> I mean, yes. Um, so she is proof that one 16-year-old person can turn the tide of human consciousness um, on the unfolding climate crisis. Um, historically, another inspiration, which was new to me but shouldn't have been new to me, is Joseph Beuys, um, German artist and uh, member of Fluxus who, this is, I thought he was pretty cool, he held um, open public debates on a very wide variety of subjects including political, environmental, social, and long-term cultural trends. And he introduced this idea of the social sculpture to mean human activity as a work of art that strives to structure and shape society or the environment using language, thoughts, actions, objects. <clears throat> yes, and he, by, he created the term to embody his understanding of the uh, art's potential to transform human society. So, he also has an incredible yellow vest and it has like a fur, there's a fur in the pocket. Um, that'll come up later. Um, but, so, uh, we are now in the moment of working on the concept uh, and we want your advice as our theater community, as artists, collaborators, fellow citizens, uh, we want to tr try to do something small that maybe gets bigger um, and this is just the beginning and what we, another idea we have is to say maybe there are these cultural producers um, and we train them in sessions to take on the work of helping us to implement multiple events in multiple parks. Um, and maybe these, maybe there's a hundred of them. And maybe it's like chain casting where um, we, f and we find a hundred people that through, uh, in terms of like race, age, gender identity, um, represent the makeup of New York City. So we're also thinking about inclusion and representation because we can't talk about inclusion um, and, and we have to practice it. So that's also in our minds. Um, and maybe we know we want to find some kind of tr structure, some kind of formal structure. Maybe these events happen on uh, Fridays for Future, on weekends. We're not really sure what the best ideas are at this point. We just have some of them. Um, and so basically, at this point, the speech is done. Um, we can go to, yes, this is, oh, so also, um, Krista Tippett has this podcast called, uh, um, well, On Being, but she has a new one, Civil Conversations, a Civil Conversations project. And Jonathan Rousen, who's an applied philosopher, was on it. And he said this, and I just like, I wrote it down immediately. Because um, I think that this is kind of, that, what he's saying is kind of what discourse can do in these public parks. Um, so yeah, so our questions, I mean, what ideas do you have that you'd like to contribute? What is important for us to be thinking about as we move forward? Um, what excites you? How might you want to be involved? Let's start talking. So I think if we could just like um, take our, our chairs. Emma, you should come down here to Jackie, you too. Jump in, jump on down. Um, I'm gonna move this up.
as you're next to somebody who has a microphone or needs a microphone, feel free to jump in. Here you take it. Um, and if someone eventually, if you, if you want, if you don't want to talk in a microphone, I completely understand that. If you will, it would be wonderful, so that we can record it and I can write it out later. Um, but I guess the first question is like, what intrigues you, or what do you find useful or compelling about this seed of an idea? Okay. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, next Saturday is Art in Odd Places, which I was supposed to be part of. And what they're doing is uh, going up and down 14th Street, which is uh, performance art. Mm -hmm. I was going to go as the invisible man with a, a butterfly and a bunch of children behind me with clapping their wings, yeah. thinking that we were going to be butterflies, <laughs> uh, which is on the metaphor of a butterfly. Uh, flapping its wings can change the direction of a storm and even create a storm. So it was with a bunch of children. But I'm just saying, so there are things happening. Uh, Union, I grew up in New York, uh, and Union Sh Square is notorious for a place that is a social sculpture in the metaphor of uh, uh, Joseph Boyce. Uh, and that's something that happens with an audience and without an audience, but there is a history of people coming together in that one specific park. And that's where the, why I got the name Union Square is because the, the unions were started there. Emma Goldman used to speak there all the time. The, uh, the, uh, there's a whole series of things that I, I'm aware of that might be of interest to this. But it, it's, we're not alone in that. But I like your idea. It just has to be more unique in some ways and yet be something that uh, engages people. Mm. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah, keep going. And also, critical feedback of all sorts is welcome. I have no ego. Mm -hmm. um, Hello. Um, yeah, well, the, the, the thing that popped into my mind uh, as, as you were, um, as you introduced this, um, and thank you for it, is the fact that, I don't know, I guess my mind just jumped to it could be anything. and. When, when I, I, I think that um, I, there's so much work that is in public spaces that kind of, to me, sits under the umbrella of this is work in a public space. And so there seem to be a lot of, um, of, 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 of characteristics that that work can take on, uh, you know, which, which um, whatever that is and whatever that has been for uh, the last, I'll just say five decades, um, just because I feel like that's where a lot of the work that I've engaged with is, was created um, between New York City where I've been for uh, almost 16 years and Washington DC where I was born, um, is that it has needed to engage safely with the public. Um, and so I guess what I'm trying to say is that my mind just kind of burst just now because I'm like, it could be, so many things. Um, I, I guess I hear a public space, work in public spaces, and my mind just goes to a certain color palette. It goes to a certain type of art. Uh, I also uh, do performance art, and so you know, it is definitely a haven for performance artists and people that are working uh, with spaces and people in the moment. Um, but I guess what I'm most excited about is, is just upending that and figuring out how to create something that is new and that really seizes people and merits that second look. Um, maybe this is me being jaded, but I feel like uh, it's very possible to walk by a public mural that um, has had every amount of heart and soul and meaning and intention behind it, um, but people just walk by it because it continues to look like everything else around it because it looks like the most rebellious version of 
art that was happening in a world that we are no longer living in. So um, I'm thrilled about the idea of making things that command attention again and that really uh, get people's attention and that I, I guess we haven't seen before in that case. And if we could, um, when, when you guys uh, start talking just at the first round of this, if you could just give us your name so that we start to get to know each other, that would be very cool. I'm Ellie, who are you? I'm Chio Kelly. I'm Sanaz. Uh, so I'm Vitoire. Uh, what I'm uh, wondering is uh, when you say like out, art uh, outside, is it like you say we're going to do art outside and so it's like an organized form of art that is just localized outside or it's, it's like more like an happening that you can then like kind of organize in an outsider way? Like for example if you think of like the I did today like of the hashtag, so like on the, on somewhere there is on the representation a, an hashtag that so people can rely that it's your movement kind of, but it's really of the form of the happening so that people they don't expect it and I feel like so today whether art is outside or inside, if it's, if we know that it's going to happen, it's the same. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Tori, and I'm really excited that this is happening right now because it's been like totally on my mind about uh, I'm a theater artist, but I want to get more into theater therapy and community theater or like public theater like this. So <coughs> this is really cool. Um, recently, I heard of a group that's in Spain, and I went to some of their um, like uh, workshops, it's called Learning by Helping, and basically what they do is they find a problem or like someone will come to them, let's say, with like, um, for example, they did something in Brazil where they had a group of kids who um, were from favelas and, you know, had obviously like troublesome lives, and what they did is they found other issues in the world for them to focus on. And so like, I don't know, they were probably like teenagers or something, so instead of like focusing on like home life things, they were like, oh wow, like we should learn how to be more sustainable or something or recycle. So like, uh, it, it's like changing your mind for another issue. This is just an example, but um, basically it just, what they do is like, uh, they find an issue and instead of um, telling someone to do something a certain way, it's like find a, finding creative solutions to something. So while you were speaking, I was just thinking it'd be cool just publicly in a park to just like have a sign that says like teaching each other skills like one person knows how to juggle one person knows how to do like a certain type of knot and just like hi what's your name my name is this you know it's like this is a very small um, way to communicate with someone where you're changing you're interchanging a, a skill that's maybe small but also like so cool because that kind of is lost in a way in this world I don't know it's just an idea, but I'm really excited for this conversation. Yeah, one of the, the, I mean, this is again just an idea. I think there's a movement in France, but also in Germany, that people just meet on a Thursday evening from five to eight. There's no agenda. They just know in the neighborhood park, people, a friend of mine took me to that. I said, I don't know. She said, no, that's really nice. So people, after a while, just go and meet, like in Italy or whatever, people just have conversations. It's a place where you can go, it's not a bar, people bring their thing, oh, this is possible here, because it's forbidden, but you're just a place in your neighborhood where you go and talk or meet your friends or meet other people on, on one level. Very, very simple, human communication. But then on, perhaps on weekends, so we say, you know, that someone brings a chair and uh, maybe someone plays a piece of music. Maybe there's a union leader who says, let me tell you what we are struggling with. Maybe there's someone in a hospital who says, let us tell you what we as nursing, whatever we are, maybe someone from a, a school teacher or someone does a, a reading of a poetry to have very, si like very simple things, but it's somehow organized that there's a coordinator, a cultural producer who, you know, gets some kind of a training where people send the emails to or not, and other things can also have a but say, you know, when you go out there, something will, will be taking place by the people and for the people, there's no central power who says yes or no, but there is um, um, someone who says, okay, you can come here, you can come then, maybe this is a good time, and if not, you can also do it on your own, but to know that 
people meet each other person in person, look into their eyes and discuss. And most probably there will be other sides of our political uh, opinion also do things, but then see who does it better. Because I think we will win. We will have better arguments and we will include people. And so it's not scary to imagine a different future. I think Edouard Glissant, who was here in this building, he always said all the fears that people have perhaps righteously about jobs and how to live and it's changing is a failure of imagination. We can imagine a different future and, but, and that this just helps that people feel at home and connected and um, as a very simple old idea of Greek you know, community where people are in public spaces talking about perhaps philosophy. I know when I would ask philosophy professors here or students or teachers, they could go out and discuss Plato at 10 o'clock in Brooklyn, if it doesn't rain, they will go. They would be thrilled. It doesn't exist. Handan, who is a colleague from me, who is a, a Turkish uh, uh, professor of theater who does play, when she said all her Turkish friends who are fired in schools because the government told them out, they are teaching in parks at the moment. And so I think this is the idea to do something so we are not, whatever the art is, not understand, we just create a forum for a civic engagement and to practice what is the most precious thing, which is free speech and an exchange of ideas. Um, my name is E.L. I use she, her. Um, so one of the things that I would be really curious about is like what is already happening in parks that uh, your organization could um, either connect with and support or um, like respond to or enhance or honor. Um, to me that is potentially really exciting. Uh, and one of the things that, that I feel like I run into all the time as someone who's relatively new to New York is I don't know where to find anything. Everything is like so atomized a lot of the time and a lot, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of groups doing a lot of things and they all use different promotional platforms and none of them seem to communicate with each other as like effectively as, as they could. Um, and sometimes there are, and this is the case in any community, redundancies and multiple groups all trying to ask or answer the same questions um, at the same time in ways that uh, could really complement each other beautifully. Um, so I would be really interested in like finding ways to, to like do that, um, to build a big web out of the little webs that are already there. Hi. Um, What's your my, name? my name is Denise, and I'm relatively new to New York also. I'm very new to New York, actually. Um, and I was, yeah, no, it's not working. Hello? Okay, now I can hear myself. <laughs> okay, and to echo um, what you said, um, I've, I mean, I might be wrong because it hasn't even been a year that I've been in New York, but um, I found the culturally engaging, politically engaging events very closed. Like, the entertainment is out there. You can find it easily. Um, even theater in the parks, like, the public does that and people can go see it. Um, but. It, as a theater artist, if I wanted to be engaged and <clears throat> actually active in any of those events, there was no way for me to find it in, unless I was very persistent, unless I found people who knew. Um, and I can't even imagine for someone who's not a theater artist and his, who's not that persistent how to find those events. Um, and I think it's very interesting, it's a very great idea if um, especially for the performance arts or um, for any kind of arts that is engaging versus entertaining, um, to give the opportunity to artists and non-artists um, to just, you know, find it out there and be engaged in it. So again, I, I think it's a, it's a very effective thing. 
One idea is to create an app. That's what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, say we try to say what can happen you know, at any time. You just click on it, and then at 8 p.m., 6 p.m. is this, and you can swipe whether you like it or not. And um, and then perhaps to have very simple websites. When if we do this idea of cultural producers, we do one or two day seminar here. We have the idea they get a yellow vest and they you know looking like a boy's felt vest with a number, and they are really responsible. They will people who say okay. You can talk in the afternoon, you can do this, you can do here, and I will be there hopefully most of the time, Fridays and start and invite with my friends. Ultimately, perhaps also encouraging people to do salons at your home, you know, invite people to watch, watch movies, you know, read poems, read books or something. But the idea to kind of a little bit formalize it, say this is happening at that time, but as you said, there's a lot out there. We don't need to tell anybody what do people know much better than I do. Although I think we could, we could. Um, I, I was thinking like maybe the app uh, or the blog or <laughs> the, the website could simultaneously have these formal spaces where in which, or these these time spaces where in which we are occupying um, and discussing, and also offers information about other things that are happening at the same in those spaces as well. So we're sort of unifying where so that someone could go to us and get all the information about all the parks somehow. I mean, I know that sounds ambitious, but yeah. Were you going to say something? Yeah. Um, yeah, and encourage people also to vote, you know, to be yeah, participant, you know, go out there and yeah. side note vote. All you have to do is find one person who votes who didn't vote before, then there would be no discussion. You vote and you find one person in all those talks, and then things would change. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it's really, uh, fun. I really like the fact that they are gathered by questions, because like, usually when you go to a show or a film or whatever, it's like you are in the moment of your life where you are thinking of something, and so you're kind of looking into the arts, like the answer, mm -hmm. and it also like will encourage the artists to know, like, to show more what they are doing, like, especially. Mm -hmm. So like, not so much by location, but more by, about what? Like content? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You were gonna say something? And then add. Uh, uh, Frank, you, you reminded me of uh, Joseph Boy's uh, Without a Rose, We Can't Do It, uh, where he, was, he sat at a table in, in Documenta, I think it was the first one, and he just had a rose at the table, and he would sit, and people would come and sit and talk to him, and the concept is without a rose, without uh, the rose represented nature. Without nature, we can't do it. So maybe an idea that I've tried to do over the years was have a rose there mm -hmm. and let people know that this is part of a mm -hmm. symbolic mm -hmm. sense. Uh, on that reference, years ago, maybe 15, 12 years ago, I had a, a, an experiment, a social so sculpture, of calling a meeting of inquiring minds. And we had no subject that we were speaking about. People would come to different cafes uh, around town or different places, and it would always be in a different place. And w the interesting part was there was no subject, and it, the subject came out of the first conversations. Someone would take notes, I would, uh, <laughs> and we would create a poem out of it, of the, the points that reference. And and then I would read it or somebody would read it. But the, the interesting part was people who were sitting around in the cafe would come and join us because they thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. And just that sense of people coming around talking drew other people who weren't, had no idea. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of, a, a, yeah. it was called a meeting of inquiring minds. And Anna, let's go to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Emma. Um, this has all made me think about um, sort of the concentration of geography um, in conjunction with this project because I feel like so many of the new references, um, Fridays for the Future, Greta Thunberg, um, uh, even the movements of the past couple years have been uh, like sort of anti-geographical, meaning um, like using the internet and using these sort of centralizing platforms to connect people. Uh, and often that connection is uh, so uh, dispersed that bringing people together, you have to be following the right people, you have to be in the right 
conversations as if you were in a physical room, like you're in the right room. There are sort of barriers to entry through self-selection, but something like a public park is, or hopes to be, um, un, uh, like you can't not notice it, you can't not pass through it on your way to work, and, and, uh, and we isolate ourselves in those spaces more and more, but I wonder what the marriage between the two is, and what, how, especially in New York, like I, I frequent my public parks, in my neighborhood, um, but I'm not friends with my neighbors, and uh, which is, you know, I've only lived in the place I've lived for less than a year, but um, I like to be friends with my neighbors, and uh, that so many important conversations happen in parks, like all of my, I think some of the deepest and most important conversations with my parents and my best friends have all happened in parks, and but those are in closed communities. So how do we open that up and how do we break through that sort of uh, rushed social barrier and we create in those spaces? And the second thing I was thinking about was what you were saying about outsiders and like outsiders versus insiders, which made me think of like um, the term outsider art um, like how that is marketed in the art world and um, how that uh, that is focused on people who aren't trained as artists um, sort of propagating their art and uh, yeah I just think that outside outsider art like there's like just so many concentric circles there um, yeah I have a response to your question about well, uh, I'm Ashley. Uh, I think uh, it's it's a the one thing that I would think would be important is about being consistent in the you know in the scheduling of the thing. And uh, since it's becoming winter, I also would propose that there are public atria that can be used to have something that's the winter location for the jam. And um, it also seems like it may be a space where people could also know when to tune in regularly on like Facebook Live or whatever that streaming yeah. service would be. I've done performances that are um, created for those events where we go site specifically to a location, but let viewers know that they can tune in at this time. And that could mean that people in their own atria or parks could tune in at the same time and you'd have a community of people in their public spaces. But it also seems like the idea of a, of a curation um, you know, the great thing about making work in parks is that for $25 you get a, um, a permit and then you can do, um, you can have a, a, you can have a, pub, a group of people there and there, there are, you know, lots about, I, I'm sure you've gone over this already, but like, a lot about, um, <laughs> about whether or not you can have uh, amplified sound and, and non-amplified sound, all that type of stuff, but you can, so you can create, but the, but, you know, there's a moment when, uh, during Occupy, when I brought pages down from Brecht's uh, Lehrstück and you know, use, handed them out to people and so that became like a kind of text that could be used as performance work that was, that was created specifically for that but then had a theme. So there's also there's the potential of making workshops of that type of work so that theater is no longer, um, well, it, it brings the activation of theater into a kind of, uh, into the public space and that also means that it could be a workshop for writers for exactly that type of thing. Like what is it to have somebody, I mean, I've also done, um, I mean, this is not, I'm just like, my response has to do a lot with work that I've done in public spaces because it's cheap and it's a great way to build up a resume, frankly, but also it's a really great test for audience. I mean, if you can have um, people, uh, like neighborhood folk who come by and they are listening to a Greek tragedy, then you probably are doing an okay job with that work, you know? Mm -hmm. So so it's also a really great um, litmus for the work itself. But I think that it would be great if there was like, if in the schedule it was, people gathering who are basically pitching ideas in a way or talking to each other about ideas, but then we'd know every Saturday some sort of performance would occur and you can tune in at this time where you could lo come to this place. And they could be like all works in process type of things or things where it's just checking out what is this, uh, what is this statement that we're trying to activate in this space. But I think that having something really consistent is the thing and then, and then having staying power, that's the only way that you know that it's going on. Uh, and I, but I think that the, having the seagull as a, as a launch of the platform is very helpful because there's a built-in audience there. So. I think that's a great idea. <laughs>
So if I were at one of those gatherings, I would say, um, in response to how do you start a conversation in the park, it might be like this. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet you can I'm play one this of the lucky bar. ones. You can play this in the synagogue. You People can play are this suffering. The People you are dying. You can go dying. to the boom box. You've all heard Entire it. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning we of a mass extinction. We can't talk anymore exactly the same way. What you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away? And come here and say so, that you are doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still I tried to turn her off. <laughs> you can't turn her off. So, I was at BAM last week at the performance of Why. I went to see the master, you know. And I sat there in the play, and the question of the play was, why theater? Which is what we're, in some ways, talking about. Theater for new audiences. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, theater for new audiences. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful performers. The mic, yeah. Oh, sorry, wonderful performers. And the play begins by asking, you know, why theater at the very beginning of time? And then a personal critique, we got hung up on Russia and Mayakovsky and I, I just didn't understand that. But two days before I saw the play, four million young people were on the street. And the, and, and, and the play had nothing to do with that. Now, we can't write plays or do works that are always completely consistent with the moment. But what do we say in those places? And I have to say, I, I couldn't help myself at the end of the play the applause ended. I certainly waited for the applause to end. I stood, stood up in my least aggressive self. I said, four million people, four million children and their supporters were on the street last week, reminding us of what we face. Why theater? Why theater? There were some you know, different responses. I think, we, I think one of the things to think about in these meetings you've called for, which I think are fabulous, is to say, how do we intervene in the culture, not just at the level of the street? How do we intervene with our peers? How do we intervene with the grand art? How do we go to ballet? How do we confront people and say, it's no longer time, nothing can be the same, the medical profession is not the same, architecture is not the same, nor is the theater. So I'm experimenting with that. I would bring it to the, I think the idea of these meetings is wonderful to come. And I'm going to turn this into that, if you like. And I would love to hear what you yeah, So the idea is maybe here's a park or a place in your neighborhood and you lead a discussion. You're, you are there in the, in the time. I mean, we have till 8 o'clock, right? And then we have till 7.55. 7.55. But the big idea for us is, uh, and we would take it serious, but does, do you guys think this makes sense? Should we engage? And that is a big undertaking for us. So that, that's also you, you have your, you have your experience. You know. Should we, do you feel this is something to explore? So it's a very serious question on our side. Or do you guys say, you no, know, I don't know, this enough stuff is already out there. So for us, it's, it's something what we thought we would like to hear from our audience, people who do come at Prelude. Drew. Yes. <laughs> that, that was the first thing I was going to say as I've been listening to all of this, is no matter what challenges you will inevitably face, no matter how intellectualizing we can get about what it means and picking apart or when it comes down to people's schedules or how much it costs or how far away it is, do it anyway. That's my number one advice. And even if it's only once a month, at Columbus Circle Central Park, or if it's every night in a different park in the distant reaches of every borough, you know? No matter where you end up with this or start with this, just do it. That's my number one 
Come. Um, I'm going to have Ellie, you're going to wrap us up, and then I'm going to wrap us one more time, and then uh, everyone should go to the public, uh, the, the final, the final, the, the Foundry's 25 years book launch. Uh, it's their final, final thing. It's their closing thing, and I have better words for that <laughs> than I'm going to say when I introduce it in five minutes. Maybe but, <laughs> leave your email, we're going yes. to another uh, session Sarah, so we can continue you, this. This is just the beginning. Hand around a piece of paper with uh, and any, anyone who would be willing to give their emails. Um, and I'll invite you to the next one of these. But Ali, please. Um, I definitely think that this is um, potent and necessary and needs to happen. And I think that um, something that I am feeling right now, which makes me question if I'm jaded, if I'm bitter, if what, maybe all of the above, is that um, we all come from very different worlds. And even if we come from the same world and we're working towards creating a unified world, at our core, we all come from very different worlds and very different places. And maybe this is a reason why so much, just to go back to what I was saying at the beginning, so much of the art in public spaces and those who have been permitted and promoted and uh, archived who are creating those pieces of work and the things that have sustained um, those people are not necessarily from the same world as the worlds of everybody that you were trying to create. So I think that um, yes, definitely it should happen, but there also must be the question of why are our worlds different and the acknowledgement of where individuals come from in order to build a world that can be unified as opposed to just putting the platform out there um, because you can't like speak to, you can't speak to someone from a completely different world if you don't understand a bit about what their world has been um, and what making work is in the context of their world. That's beautiful, thank you. And um, I just wanna say for us, this is, we're learning because what we're also trying to do is organize a decentralized experience and lead a, um, a, uh, a, you know, a, 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 a um, an initiative without being in charge. <laughs> does, you, does that make sense? You're, um, and so a lot of the wanting to sort of delegate out or like expand out the, um, the agency is, um, is very much in order for it to not be just what we think it should be. Um, which is why I think the next step is to have another another meeting like this. And I look forward to seeing, I hope, many of you there. Um, and I think everything that we experienced tonight and is just the, the smallest beginning of what I am excited to, to continue on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, please join us at the Alabash Recital Hall uh, for the final evening, this evening's final uh, shindig. I'm on my way, David. <laughs>